This week on Outside the Boards, we get to talk about junior hockey. I'm going to go through all the foundations of juniors as thoroughly as I can and as quickly as I can. Um, there's so much that goes into juniors. You always get the question about what is juniors and what it's like. Um, this week, we're just going to be talking about the foundations, the structures of junior hockey, um, payment, stuff like that. And then next week, we are going to cover some of my personal experiences and more realistic stuff about juniors, what it's like. Junior hockey is for players 15 to 20 years old that are looking to play college or professional hockey. So it's players that are trying to actually make it um, part of their life in college, um, college club, professional hockey, whatever it is. So it's the next level after U18 or high school. There are four levels of junior hockey. Now, junior A, B, and C doesn't exist anymore. It's not what we call them. We call it major junior. There's tier one, there's tier two, and then there's tier three. All of these leagues have drafts. Um, so this is like the NHL. They can draft players from wherever. And if you're drafted there um, and you want to play in that league, you have to go there. But if you are undrafted, you can sign anywhere. Junior hockey players sign contracts and they can be traded. These contracts just um, bind them to the program and the organization and also payments um, at the tier two and tier three levels. Juniors players live in billet houses or apartments. Uh, in billet houses, you pay a host family around $300 a month, basically. Um, so you can live there, you're paying rent, and also they're providing you food. So the most elite junior league is major junior. Um, so there's actually three leagues in major junior hockey. There's the Ontario Hockey League, Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, and the Western Hockey League. So these are all um major junior leagues um you can hear the nicknames of these the o the q the dub those are all the nicknames for these leagues so if you listen to check lips or whatever that's what they're referring to most of these teams are in canada so there's actually a few in michigan there's a few in washington one in oregon you do not get to choose the league that you go to so the where you are born or where you are living determines that league there's one big issue with the major junior leagues is that you cannot play in the NCAA. You are given a stipend per month and it's not a ton of money, but technically the NCAA sees it as being paid and you are a professional. So major junior players are super successful. So the first round of the 2020 NHL draft, 61% came from major juniors. 35% of all NHL 2020 draft picks so you can see that these players are really trying to go play professional, um, high-end professional, trying to go to the NHL. You can, you can go down the list of players that play in these leagues, Patrick Kane, um, Connor McDavid, Sidney Crosby. It's, it's the majority of those high-end players played in the uh, major junior leagues. Next, USHL, the United States Hockey League. You know, USHL is the only tier one league in the U.S., there's 16 total teams, and that's including the National Development Program who participates in the USHL. Um, that stuff's kind of tricky. They do not get to play a full season because obviously they're participating in a lot of uh, world events. So the USHL drafts players as well, just like the major junior leagues. Um, you are treated as a pro, but you are not paid. So everything is free. Um, if you want to go play college hockey after USHL, you totally can. That's really what their goal is um, in this league. So this is the most elite league in the U.S. Um, it's really kind of our comparison to major juniors. You can see most of these teams are located in the Midwest. There's NTDP in Michigan. There's Muskegon Lumberjacks. Um, and then you have some in uh, Nebraska, North Dakota. So you can see these teams are really located um, more in the central U.S., the vast majority of USHL players are going to NCAA Division I programs. They're going to those high-end programs. Um, 21 players were taken in the 2020 NHL draft, and a few players will be um, going to play Division III NCAA. That's usually really high-end D3. Um, and a few will play college club hockey. Tier 2 is the NAHL. It's the only Tier 2 league that is sanctioned in the U.S. Um, this is also referred to as the NAL, 
or you know the NA um, North American League. So there are 29 teams in the null currently. Uh, it's really grown in the last few years, which is awesome. This is giving more players opportunity to play at a high level. The main focus of these leagues, the USHL and the NA, really is um, development, development, development. That's all they're trying to do is get players ready for their next level, whether it's college or pro. These players are treated very well at, in the NA. Uh, the hockey is free, but you pay for the billets. Like that's like 300 bucks a month. You're basically paying rent. Um, these leagues, again, every league has drafts and you can sign at any time. It has some older players that are looking to go to um, a high-end Division three program or it has some really young players that are looking to go play in the USHL the next year. So it's super diverse. Um, a lot of scouts are watching this league. You can see where these teams are located. There's some in the South, um, the, the North South, uh, that's Texas, you know, Louisiana, they have some teams down there. And they also have some in the Midwest, some out East. So this team's a little bit um, larger geographically than the United States Hockey League. Many of these players are going to go play NCAA Division I. Many go on to play NCAA Division III. A few can be drafted in the NHL every year, and a good amount um, of alumni have played in the NHL after going to college or whatever it is. And then again, some go on to play uh, college club hockey. Tier two junior leagues in Canada. So tier two in Canada, there is nine. There's nine leagues tier two in Canada. It is crazy. They're, you know, it's awesome for players to have the opportunities to go play in these leagues. BC and AJ allow those players to go on NCAA Division I. Players from other leagues often go to NCAA Division III or Canadian college, or they'll go play club hockey. Tier three in the US, um, there are multiple leagues. There is the NA3HL, there is the USPHL. The NA3 has 34 teams, very big league. And then there's the USP has 62 teams. Here, when you're playing tier three, you're paying everything. This is where it gets different than tier two and tier one. You're paying for everything here. You're paying for hockey, you're paying for housing, you're paying for your equipment. Um, so it can be expensive. Some teams have great um, ownership or great communities that help out a lot and players don't have to pay as much. Really depends on the team though. There is also a league called the NCBC. Now I put it in tier three, they claim to be a tier two league. So they're not USA hockey sanctioned. Um, the NCDC is really trying to compete with the null and they're doing a good job. NCDC competes with NA teams and competes with um, these high end tier three teams as well. The very, very best players from tier three can go to division one. Usually it's not gonna be a high end division one program, but some of those smaller D1 programs, players will definitely go there. Um, the best players, on their teams will usually go NCAA Division Three, and then a lot of players will go on to play club. And again, you know, that's that's just the way the hockey world is working right now. It's super competitive. There's so many players, so many teams that it's really hard to get those NCAA programs. But um, college club is also getting a lot better and a lot of players are going there because it's cheaper. Um, hockey's still really good. So lastly, what are junior scouts looking for? Junior scouts are looking for really good people, you know, good human beings, treating teammates well, respecting their coaches. They're also looking for very strong, basic skills. Okay, so they're looking for you to make tape, tape passes. They're looking for you to be a good skater. They're looking for you to have good hands and a good shot. Very basic stuff. If you can be really, really good at the simple things, that's what's going to get you to the next level. Um, number three, they're looking for compete. They need players who are willing to compete, um, play hard, moving their feet, all that stuff. Then they're looking for hockey IQ stuff. And um, also they're looking for consistency. You know, they're looking, have you been doing this for a long time? Have you been good at what you do for a long time? Or did you just have a good year last year? So a lot of that stuff is what scouts are looking for. Thank you guys for watching this one. Again, this is so important that we understand what juniors is like, what the costs are. Um, it's so important for your parents to understand. So please share this with your parents. Please share this with other players that you think may be interested in junior hockey. Next week, I really hope to dive into my experiences, other players that I know their experiences and what juniors is really like. 
Thank you for watching Outside the Boards with me, Jacob at North End Hockey. If you like what you saw, please subscribe to our YouTube page or follow us on Instagram to see more videos like this one. If interested in learning more about North End Hockey, check out our website, northendhockey.com. Thanks for watching.